Hello everyone. This is Reverend Kelly here in my church office. It's the afternoon of Easter Sunday and this morning we had our last live broadcast of worship from the sanctuary. And as I mentioned this morning, next week we'll be going to a different kind of worship format which involves us um, broadcasting worship from home. So I and the worship team will be working together for that. It's just we'll be working remotely. So we'll be bringing you worship from our homes to your home. Um, and in the spirit of that, I thought I would talk to you a little bit about household altars. Um, it sounds fancier than it is, so I think I'll just show you the setup I have. This is actually um, a replica of my own household altar. Um, and it has just a few elements in it, which you'll probably recognize. The most important feature of this is um, the three candles. So if you'd like to follow along with worship at home and participate in the rituals, really what you need are, are three candles in some form of ignition. So here on this decorative plate, um, I have uh, a box of matches and I have the center community candle, which in this case actually is a chalice. It's a wooden chalice that I used a lot when I taught at the sanctuary because I could throw it in my school bag and it would not break and we could do class rituals with that. So this is an actual miniature chalice. And then I have two tea lights, um, one for joys and one for sorrows. Um, and that's really kind of all you need. Um, it's on a plate along with a bell, which was a wedding gift to us. Um, and I use the bell um, uh, in the same way that I would use it during actual worship, which is as a transition out of silence or to ring something in or ring something out as needed. So this particular arrangement is a plate, three candles, a bell, and a box of matches. It's pretty straightforward, um, but it is useful, again, to have some sort of designated spot or focal point, um, particularly if you like a more participatory worship experience. All of these are actual live candles with wax and wicks. Um, some people will prefer electronic candles. This is one that's pretty convincing. Um, and um, you can put it in whatever you have for a chalice. Um, some people may just want to use a pillar candle for the community candle. Um, but there are some pretty um, convincing chalices that are kind of found, as it were, around the house. So you may want to repurpose some household items. This is actually something that the staff and I use, which is, again, this electronic candle. And this particular one is an ice cream dish. It may remind you of our Bring a Friend Sunday, but it is glass and cut, and so it's a little bit reflective. It actually makes... Um, uh, sort of lovely again focal point um, so this is an ice cream dish along similar lines you can use um, a fruit bowl this one is um, reflective and again sort of is mesmerizing in the same way that the, the glass one is um, you can also make use of a goblet some people use um, goblets and put candles in that and that becomes a flaming chalice. If you don't have a plate or a tray or a platter that um, you like for a household altar, you can always use some kind of decorative cloth just to define the space. Um, and again, unite the candles and the bell if you're using one. Um, it's a very nice touch. Um, you can also make your own chalice. Um, someone had given me actually um, an egg cup that had been converted to a candle and it's a very convincing chalice. This is something that the children in our Sunday school made. They had melted down candles and melted down crayons into this rainbow candle which is in a glass globe and again it's entirely convincing as a as a flaming chalice so it's also an all-ages activity if you want to do that. Um, it's a fun thing to do and it's a good thing to have. So as our shared worship life is changing during the campus closure here, um, I do really want to underscore what I said this morning, which is church follows us wherever we go. We bring it with us and we are it. Um, so however remote we are, um, we are still a congregation 
and an inspirational community of faith. And I think having a household altar and participating in, in virtual worship as richly and fully and convincingly as you can um, just makes that truer and truer. So um, please do um, consider having a focal point or household altar as you um, continue to worship with us virtually. Um, and if you use it on a Sunday, that's wonderful. If not, you can have it as a kind of nearby reminder of that benediction that we say often in our touchstone groups, and I say every Sunday, you know, about having the quality of our lives be a benediction and a blessing to all we touch. So if you have things on hand that can remind you of that, all the better. Okay, well, I hope to see you all next Sunday. Um, again, back in virtual worship as I'll be broadcasting to you from my home office. Until then, take care and happy Easter, everyone. Bye.